the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Stay away from cities with dyke mayors. They spray the pipes, major. Don't play with the life player. Or say the dice player. But if you got a quarter, then stay away from dollars. These bitches are fight promoters. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Train your toddler. Please train your toddler. Whippers, timeouts, take her allowance. Cause that's what she will destroy your life if you allow it. Fucking, I'm tired of rapping. Yo, low, bring it in the choir. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Talking about every night, um, um, we, um, I wanted some boyfriends, so I'm moving out. Because okay. Daddy told you you can't have a boyfriend in his house, so you're moving out. Yes. I forgot to take it off mute. Alright, so let me start over. Let me start over. I had it on mute because I was doing hood rat shit. Welcome to Dirty Folks Daycare. I am your tolerologist, Dirty Folks. I just want to thank you guys for showing up, man. Y'all could be anywhere y'all want to be, but y'all here with me. And I appreciate that. Don't let these toddlers cancel me, yo. This is the daycare. But this is the daycare for guys who want to train a toddler. This is the daycare training center. This is not for the toddlers, right? Because I see they canceling people left and right. Uh, I want I want y'all to know, man. And y'all really should share the the Black Boomer Week series, man. I'm, I'm here all week. And I want y'all to know this is cathartic for me, bro. This is... This is therapeutic. As a child, I always wonder, like, what the fuck is my parents talking about? Like, there, there are, there are things that are passed down generation to generation. You can call them traditions, but if your tradition is a curse, then you have a generation of curse, not a generational tradition, right? And to be perfectly honest with you, you have very few traditions, except your generational curse and worshiping the curse. You have very few traditions. Most of your traditions are American traditions, not tribal traditions. That makes sense. So, if we're going to play the American game... Let's play the American game. Because intrinsically, we are American. Like it or not, we are American. You can passport, bro, your ass, wherever you want to go, but we all American. And I realized as I was making my coffee that I am my own version of a passport, bro. As I think about this beautiful land, all the places I visited. Las Vegas. The Grand Canyon. Mount Rushmore, Atlanta, Miami, not L.A., but I'm going to throw L.A. in there just because Houston, 
Dallas. I would say I've I've traveled to maybe 37 cities in 26 states. And I could say for like 90, over 90% of the places I went, I saw this great land. Because I was getting some pussy, yo. I was traveling and getting some pussy. It was a chick out there in North Carolina, in Fargo, North Dakota. She was in the Air Force base. I was going to fuck, bro. I was already in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, chasing a white bitch. Well, I wasn't chasing a white bitch. A white, actually, a white chick offered me a townhouse in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. My guys had kept telling me, man, come to South Dakota. Come. I was like, I ain't going to South Dakota. Then my nigga TJ went out there was like, yo, the money's so good in South Dakota. I'm like, for real? I was like, I'm on, I'm on my way to South Dakota. Niggas mad at me like, man, oh. How you gonna go? Cause TJ said, I say, yo, cause y'all chase pussy. TJ chase money. I come for the money. I ain't coming for no pussy. Once again, my problem with the passport bros. You're leaving because you're afraid of women trying to get a woman and you're not going for a purpose. But I was like, if I'm gonna come, I gotta get comfortable. So I went on my space, hollered at a white girl. White girl was like, I got two cribs. I got a townhouse. You can have it. I'm like, fuck yeah. So I went out there. She gave me the keys, nigga. I got the townhouse. I had to get a white girl some dick, but you know, you gotta pay your rent somehow, right? And then while I'm down there, shit, some bitch from, from the Air Force was like, man, I'm in Fargo, North Dakota, man, slide down. I saw Mount Rushmore. I haven't seen this beautiful land, just fucking bitches. Um, so, shout out to that. But I say all that to say this. So we are American. And we all have the, the ability to, and the right to be part of this American dream. And the American dream was being stolen from us first by policy. But policy was Southern. I want want y'all to realize something really briefly. Real briefly. Let me me cut the music off of this. I want y'all to understand what I'm about to say. When they talk about... Can I reverb this shit? I want to reverb this shit. I want y'all to understand me fully, man. Is it a reverb on this? This ain't no reverb. I don't know how to revert. Shout out, shout out to me for having a soundboard. Don't know how to use it. Anyway, when you guys talk about black struggle, you're only talking about south of the Mason Dixon line. When you talk slavery, south of the Mason Dixon line. When you talk Jim Crow, South of the Mason Dixon line. When you guys start talking about uh most of the shit y'all talk about is south of the Mason Dixon line. Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, F- Florida wasn't even part of that. South Carolina, North Carolina, West Virginia, regular Virginia. DC area, that whole DNC area. Y'all talking about 10, 13 states. Everybody else had racism. Sundown towns, last hired, first fired. The America was racist. But when you start talking about systemic systemic racism, like policy. You talking down south. Everybody ain't down south, B. Most niggas was in, in New York. Then they moved to the Midwest, to Detroit, Chicago, really Cleveland. But Cleveland, a mistake on the lake. So Cleveland didn't happen just like the year 1996 didn't happen. So this has been cathartic for me. Just listen to these goddamn boomers. Who's supposed to be leading us, but all they're concerned with is white people and the boogeyman. The boogeyman becomes the government because the government is the logo for white people. Nobody else has this fascination with the with the Caucasian persuasion. Because every Chinatown got a logo. That's why they get whatever rights they want to get. All the all the Asians got a logo. That's why they get whatever Asian protection bills they're supposed to get. Everybody got a logo, bro. Either they fuck with your logo, like the Asians, or they don't fuck with your logo, like the Haitians. But you still represented by your logo. Niggas just got a color. And because all they got a color, all they can do is play color games. 
And that's why I'm taking the colors back from LGBT because the daycare is what colors start. And my shirt matched the LGBT. You can ask Wayne, Tupac is in Cuba, bro. 1996 didn't happen, bro. Anyway, this lady right here is doctor. And you know how I feel about, hold on, let me say this real quick. Y'all know how I feel about these PhD ass niggas, right? You go to school just so you can get a title so people listen to you say dumb shit, but you ain't a doctor of nothing. There's nothing that they say that you couldn't figure out on your own. You know what? Everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to Slick Rick. <laughs> Slick Rick said we're talking about the silent generation, not the boomers. The boomers were drug and alcohol addicts from Woodstock to the Obama administration. That's true. But here's the thing. They take credit for everything the silent generation did or civil rights generation or Great Depression generation whatever you want to call them they went through a lot of shit world war ii generation they went through a lot of stuff that was a strong generation that was my grandparents generation strong strong people but boomers take credit for their shit so they can take the blame for their shit and they want generation x to take the blame for everything boomers did but they erase generation x from history and go straight from boomer to millennial but i digress we're talking about the boomer era not necessarily boomers we're talking about the things that were happening in the 1960s and 1970s while the boomers were in their prime when they was in their 20s the policies the things that they were taught that they taught the next generations on how to be slaves right all right so let's let's go back to Cress. dr francis Cress wilson Contributed by Erica Bryan, because you know it got to be some goofy ass toddler to worship a toddler in the best possible light, right? Y'all saw the thumbnail. Y'all saw who Enforcer was, but let's get into it. Francis Cress Wellsling, a psychiatrist best known for writing the ISIS papers, was born, it don't matter where she was born, she was born in Chicago. Because, you know, why not, right? She got a bachelor. She got she got a BA in Ohio at Antioch College and a medical degree from Washington, D.C.'s Howard University. After getting her her medical degree, she decides to go back to school to become a staff position. And then she became a psychiatrist so basically just today i remember the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist a psychiatrist and psychologist do the same shit they both say you 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 hate your dad and want to have sex with your mom and everything is men's fault unless it's white supremacy fault but y'all call white supremacy the man so that's still men's fault but psychiatrists can give you pills psychologists just tell you to come back next week so i just realized because she got the medical degree so that's why she's a psychologist because it wasn't enough to make you healthy or birth babies in a time where black people couldn't go to the hospital to birth they said they had birthing centers that wasn't enough she was like i need to fuck with your head nigga and all i'm gonna tell you is white man bad so i'm not gonna read this whole thing but I just want to give you a general construct on who. And as much as girls love titles, I'm shocked that a, that a, a toddler wrote this and didn't put doctor in front of her name not one time. Not one goddamn time. In 1991, Wilsling published her most famous work, a collection of essays titled the isis papers the keys 
to the colors. I'm going to call them colors with a D, but the keys to the colors, which discussed in depth the issues of white supremacy and racism in the U.S. The ISIS papers, well seen, delve deeper into the theories of melanin deficiency among whites as the driver of racism, white supremacy, and white segregation. The process of psychoanalyzing white racism, Wilson also discussed the importance of recognizing racial behaviors and symbols among blacks that were psychologically damaging in which they needed to be counted and destroyed. She listed among those behaviors homosexuality, which she claimed was a strategy for destroying black people. I'm going to stop reading because we're going to get into her. We're going to get into her speech. We're going to break that down during the speech. But I want you all to understand something real quick. You can tell blacks are matriarchal because all they talk about is racism. While every other man talks about tribalism. In the year of 1490, you know they say 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, all that good shit. There was a, a, a global race for spices. For spices. Because there was no refrigeration. People got tired of eating rotted meat. Basically. The running joke being white people conquered the world for spices and now they don't put no spices on their food. But there was a, a global war, global contest, if you'd like, for spices. The most famous navigator on earth was a man whose name I can't remember, but he was from China. And I'm going to look up his name because it's important. Chinese navigator. Zing He. His name was Zing He. Zing He is apparently so goddamn popular. He got po- he got statues in in China. Let me show you something. Let me show you. Zing He. Pretty much marked most of Europe. He's the one that he's the map maker for most of Europe. But let's read what they say about him. Zing He was a a Chinese mariner explorer, diplomat, fleet admiral, and court eunuch during China's early Ming Dynasty. Hold on, let me say something real quick. I think it's fucked up that some of the most impactful people in China were eunuchs. They would find these people that work in the royal, for the royal um, house, or whatever you want to call it, whatever dynasty was going on, and they would castrate them because they didn't want those men to sleep with the emperor's concubines or harem or whatever you want to call them but these are some of the, the strongest most uh capable the gentlemen i'm gonna use gentlemen even though they ain't got no weenie on earth it's just like um for those those of you guys who watch game of thrones how daenerys got they her army of eunuchs that was a direct derivative of what china was doing with their greatest so Fuck that he was a unit. But he was a boss. He was a boss. Anyway, let's 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 finish finish this up. <sighs> he was court unit during China's early Ming Dynasty. He was originally born born Mahi in a Muslim community, a Muslim family, and later adopted the surname Zing, conferred by the Yongle Emperor. He was born in 1371 died in 1433 he was the when he was alive China had the biggest fleet of ships in the world y'all hear about Britain like Britain got the biggest fleet China was morphing them and they had huge yachts where they were battleships but they were like huge and they took over spicing the reason that Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 is because Asia had the, the game on lock so hard that they had to create the uh, the Silk Road in order to travel through land. You know what I'm saying? Because they couldn't take the, the Mariner route because China had that shit on lock. China and the Dutch had that shit on lock. So when Spain wanted to get in the game, 
they listen to this dude talking about, look, don't worry about that. We're not going to go east. We're going to go west and we're going to hit it from the back. And he ran into South America, which is how they, quote unquote, discovered an entire fucking continent that wasn't missing. But that's the reason, because they were spooked of the Asians. But the Asians was going through so much bullshit that around that time they built the, the Great Wall of China and they burned all their fleet because they didn't want people. They, they became isolationists. But my point of saying all that is China was tribal. Britain was tribal. France was tribal to an extent, but France and Britain are like cousins, but they the type of cousins that we can fight each other, but can't nobody else fight us. Type of cousins. Um, we already know what the Roman Empire did. The Roman Empire was tribal as shit. And they didn't fall until they stopped being tribal and became an empire. When they started getting the Mongols, um, which is funny because the Mongols were really the Germanic people because Germany was black at that time. Not the Mongols, the uh, barbarians, the bar- barbarians. And they were called barbarians because white people are weird. They just, you don't understand what they're saying. All you hear is bar, 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 bar. So they start calling them barbarians because every word sounds like bar, bar. The same way we tease Asians like, chai, 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 chai. it's like if you call them the, chai, we do call them the Chinese because they think it's like, chai, chai, chai. we racist. Anyway, damn, we racist as shit. The whole world is racist, but the whole world is tribalist. So, but when it comes to the coloreds here in America, it's race instead of tribe. So now you go against a color instead of recognizing that one tribe is trying to survive. I ain't playing with you today talking about cheeks and tacos, even though that sounds delicious. Um, but okay. I'm gonna show you guys something else. Somebody else. Somebody that when I was a child, it's not even that I was a child and thought as a child. I was just a child and I didn't know the extent of what this dude was on. There was a guy who was the he was a militant. Was a militant. And this militant dude somehow became part of a rap group, yo. The name of the rap group was Public Enemy. The name of his militia was the S1Ws. And this man's name was Professor Griff. When I was young and Professor Griff and his group we're doing all that Hebrew Israelite shit, dancing around in circles, doing a Melissa march. And white people were really scared of Professor Professor Griff. Like, for real. They would like really intimidated him in the 1980s, early 1990s. Um But he never spoke. Professor, Professor Griff never talked. So you just saw him as the the, the general of the S1Ws. Then he started talking. And Griff started getting on this pro blackity black shit. And that's when it was part of the push for you to not believe that not only are you not indigenous to America, this is part of that push. They have been pushing this since the 1970s with Roots, with the movie Roots. They've been pushing it. But now they pushing that not only are you not indigenous to America but you got conquered somewhere else here's the funny thing about niggas niggas love to be slaves they, they love to be victims so much that they only choose places where people get conquered think about that if America got colonized that's fine so where do you say you're from Egypt. Egypt is the most colonized country in the world. In the world. Nobody has lost more fights than Egypt. Your most pivotal time when you start talking about Queen uh, Cleopatra. Queen Cleopatra was from um, not Medea. Anyway, she was from the north side of Greece. 
I can't think of the name of the, of, the, of the country, but it's the north side of Greece, basically. So she was Greek, Macedonian. She was Greek or Macedonian, whatever you want to call her. She wasn't even African. The war that took place for um, for for the, the Romans, because around that time, when Cleopatra got taken over, she got taken, a Macedonian, a Greek chick, got taken over by the Romans. She got taken over by uh, Augustus Caesar. She was trying to sleep with Augustus because she didn't want to fuck her brother no more. And then Augustus, she helped because toddlers are professional fight promoters. She got Augustus Caesar to kill her brother and then thought her pussy was so good that Augustus would let her keep her country. And he was like, all right, now that you open the door so we can get your brother out the way who had the real militia and the real military mind. Now that you backdoored your own people to get your brother out the way, I'm going to take your shit. And to this day, y'all talking about Elizabeth Taylor couldn't be Cleopatra because she was black. No, she wasn't. She was Greek. So every time y'all even think that y'all have some type of racial pride, y'all talk about somebody who got conquered. Y'all niggas is crazy. But y'all don't read, though. It's cool. Y'all just blackwash everything like white people whitewash everything. Be like, oh, it was really black. Y'all don't read. Y'all don't history. Y'all don't, y'all don't do shit. But I'm here for you. I got you. <sighs> And there was no slaves came from Egypt. Anyway, they all came from the west coast of Africa. Dumb. The equivalent would be to for, for slavery to happen in L.A. Because L.A. got the coast to get to China. And then you become a slave in China and be like, yo, I'm from New York, B. It's not even, nobody going to march you from New York to L.A. to get on a boat to go to China. That don't make no, make no sense. <sighs> Greeks were black. The Greeks were Greeks. Get off that color shit. The Greeks were Greek. Just like the the Haitians are Haitian, the Jamaicans are Jamaican, the Senegalese are Senegalese. Nationality. Tribe tribalism is based on nationality. It's not based on color. Get off that shit. I'm gonna get y'all right. Yeah, like and sub as y'all come in, man. Like and sub as y'all come in. Okay, so because y'all are coloreds, and one thing I know about coloreds is y'all judge y'all men by your women. Because y'all coloreds. What else you gonna do? Y'all matriarchs. You know how many girls I heard say, I don't know, because you know, women, black women voted for Hillary Clinton in the primary in 2004. Uh, what the fuck was 2004, 2000. They voted for Hillary Clinton, bro, 2008. White women saved us from Hillary Clinton. And then in the general election against John McCain, black women was like, I guess I'll vote for Obama because he got a black wife. They ain't give a fuck. He ain't had no policy. He ain't had no history. He was a one-term senator. All they give a fuck about is your mama black. But his mama ain't black. His mama was white, but his wife was black. And she was from Chicago, so she was ghetto. So like, we're going to vote for Obama because y'all judge men by the women. So let's go back to Griff. Who did Professor Griff marry? motherfucking Soleil. A lot of y'all too young to remember, but Soleil used to be an artist, and she was like, honestly, Soleil was Sierra before Sierra. She was a she was a chick that went through the whole industry, having babies and sleeping with all the rappers and R&B dudes, and then ended up settling down with Professor Griff. I'm going to show y'all something. In 2017, Professor Griff and so of a public enemy and Soleil got married. When I was a kid, I swear to God, I always thought Soleil was a genuine girlfriend. And I think she was. I think she's genuine ex-wife or some shit. Baby mama or something. Soleil was busting. And I say that to say this. Because I want y'all to see this photo. Can I make it bigger? Yes, I can make it big. I ain't got no bigger. It just went to another screen. Okay, this is what I need y'all to understand. After girls finish being busted, they always 
become Hebrew Israelite or fruit of Islam or join the, the Baptist church, uh, Dean's, you know, Dean board or, or some, every time buses decide to purify themselves, they buy a Yoni rock and join a religion. So this is what she did to Professor Green. Yo, Sole was nice though in that day. Um, I might even risk getting demonetized and show y'all a Sole video. Um, how short is Griff? Look at this. Professor Griff went a whole step higher than her just to be two inches taller than her. Sole was bad though. Um, Sola said, we not welcome in the blue lives. It's hilarious. All right, I want you, I want to read this with you guys. This is her caption on on uh Instagram. I could really paraphrase this. I could really paraphrase this and say, hey big head. This is really a hey big head. They got her married. But let's let's read it. So that was cute. I ain't fine. Okay. So Hold on, I gotta put my girl voice on. Today marked one year to the day that Progressive Griff and I connected and had lunch as friends. We had no clue what would ensue. At the time, we had known each other for 27 years, but he was always like my big brother. Pause. Pause, pause. Nigga, he was in the friend zone for 27 years, nigga. 27, that don't mean she 27 years old, nigga. That means she was grown in the industry. He was grown in the industry. They was yelling for the power. She was she was yelling, e -e 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 -e. dance with genuine. They met 27 years. Friend zone, 27 years. I really want to reread it, but I, I hate using the synthesizer too long because I don't know if y'all can hear me, but... Who the fuck recommends you to go to lunch with somebody you knew for 27 years? You don't have to be introduced to a nigga you knew 27 years. Some. <sighs> I wish I would be in the friend zone 27. I ain't never hit. Yeah, got me fucked up. Anyway, let's go back to where we was at. Fucking. All right, we right here, y'all. Oh, shit. To me better. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I just... <laughs> Alright, they went to lunch. After lunch, something changed. I'm... And a beautiful platonic friendship based on love and mutual respect began blossoming into a beautiful romantic relationship based on that foundation. Today, to celebrate that connection, that reconnection over lunch, we spent time offering prayers at the temple and exchanging rockies. Traditionally, sisters tie a rocky to their brother's wrist as a reminder of his duty to protect and honor his spiritual as well as brotherly obligations. They take a vow to protect them from harm and sisters pray for long life for their brothers. However, the practice is now done often between other family members and even friends and lovers. The thread tied on his wrist symbolizes the brother must protect himself spiritually from the bondage of materialism. The brother protects the sister with his life, and the sister shows respect and love in the form of worship. Rocky signifies the bond of brothers and sisters, but can also be tied by a wife, daughter, or mother for protection. We tie them on each other as a symbol of love, honor, respect, and protection for one another, and offer these prayers to the divine. Bruh. Bruh. 
this is a finesse, but this this actually blends in with Chris Wilson pretty good. But this is a finesse. My motherfucker's talking about some. I tied this on his wrist. Let me put my watch on. This is this is my hockey today. This is my hockey today. I tied this around his wrist to make sure that he protect me at all times because. And then I'm going to pray for him. He put him around my wrist. So I pray that he stay alive while he protecting me. So with this, I be with that he is, I am a fight promoter and he is my champion. That's basically what I said, right? <sighs> okay. Like we were saying earlier, y'all. And I'm just showing this because it's not about Soleil. This is about Griff. But y'all judge y'all men by y'all women. So... Let's let's just take a brief look into Soleil. Wait, I was already there. Damn. Like y'all said, man, I always thought Soleil was with with uh genuine. You know what I'm saying? And she was she was nice back then. You know, she, she was she was alright. Um, Soleil had a little career. Even her career depended on genuine. This is not even genuine's song, by the way. She did this song with Jason Weaver. I guess he changed his name to Jay Weed for a minute. But Jason Weed was a shut town guy. But all her clips is with her with Genuine. This ain't even Genuine song, yo. She needed her. We said the other day, bro, that women need men, men's covenant in order to make it. Soleil is. I'm going to tell you what Soleil is. Soleil is where Jada Pickett would have been if Will Smith was a lesser star or didn't cover so late the reason a lot of y'all unless y'all old heads a lot reason a lot of people that's watching this don't know who the fuck soleil is it's because soleil was hot in the 90s a lot of people that's watching this later gonna be born in the 90s or early 2000s they don't know who the fuck soleil is don't know she ain't got no classics that they still play so this is what i want to do guys now that we have set up who Professor Griff is. We're about to get into this Chris Wilson thing. I want y'all to understand this though. Chris Wilson. Was part of an all woman. Black woman. Change your life panel. Hosted. And arranged by. Professor Griff. Tola be trolling hard as shit, yo. Talking about where's JT money. <sighs> Alright, so let's take a quick intermission and we're gonna come back and get into Dr. I'm gonna give it a respect that the, the other toddlers that worship it on. Dr. Francis Cress Dash Wesley. Cause of course she's disrespectful because she's Dr. Francis Cress. Or she's Dr. Francis Wilson, but she can't give up her maiden name because she don't respect men. But she's about to teach you guys how you should be respected. These bitches. I hate old black people so much. Anyway, let's do this quick animation and come back. Dirty folks. Toddler tales are crazy stories that can only happen to me. Each tale is endorsed by Toddlerology and the Marry Your Secretary courses. In a world where toddlers are only loyal to her employer, learn the skills needed to train your toddler to work at your relationship like she works at her job. There's courses for every level of your relationship status, including polygamy. Need support? Join scheduled study groups with other Toddlerology members. Click the link below. And now, back to today's story. I've been forgetting to say this for a minute, but the the Marriott Secretary Tolerology link is in the description. If y'all use dirty folks as a code, get a 15% discount until the 31st of this month. I've been meaning to tell y'all about the dirty folks 15% discount code, but I'll be on my, my daily bread. So Let's get into this this Francis shit. Wait. Y'all can still see me. I ain't supposed to see me. There I go. Okay. 
I'm only showing you for this for like the purpose of you knowing that Professor Griff was the, the, the MC and host of this event. But I also want you guys to know that he ain't saying nothing that every black woman you've ever heard hasn't said. And because of that, that's how you know he is the enforcer for the matriarchy. Not Because black men think that the matriarchy is black. And because they think the matriarchy is black, they think they, they need to defend the black woman. And that's defending black. Because niggas is dumb. But, let's go. Your attribute is your divine purpose. When mom call your name, remember, we bear power. What? Let me say this real quick, guys. This is Dr. Maramumba Ali. She's an anthropologist. The, the... I just want to say this real quick this will probably be the one time i don't interrupt what i will say before she rocks because i want to let her rock as i agree with a lot of what she says a lot and the fact that she's an anthropologist and not a psychologist or historian or an economic uh, economist, which is ironic because no black economists talk about money. They all talk about race. I'm starting to think anthropology is the way to go, man. I might, I might do an anthropology series because she was, she was on point. It's not the fact that she's still not talking about race, but at least it makes sense. It's not a white people superior thing. It's a historically this is what happened. Shout out to, to anthropology, man. All right, so I'm not going to interrupt that. Though. I'm going to let her rock. Just so you guys can get context. Because the next two goofy bitches. Because she's the opening speaker. Then there's another chick who I guess paid for the event. So she got to talk. And then Dr. Chris come on. And then it'd be, it be real whole temporary. But... What is it? Hold on. I'm also put the closed caption on for you guys. Because I want you guys to get the context. Because wherever they are, they... Hold on, I'm going to say this too. Why is Griff, who came from Public Enemy, why is he at this event and the, and the audio visual is so fucked up? Why is the camera so blurry? Why do I keep hearing echoes? Why they don't have that little fuzzy thing that go over the microphone so you don't get the, the acoustic echo? Like, who set up this shit, yo? Chuck D... Chuck D Hotep now too though. Yeah, Chuck D pretty Hotep. Chuck D sent them off. Chuck D sent them off. The audio is bad. That's why I'm put the uh the close caption on here, gentlemen. If it's them, what is in their political interest? Mm -hmm. Their when there is no ma'at, there is no spirit. And they call that universal truth. And they devise the system so that it trains those whom they want to oppress, control, and dominate to be oppressed, controlled, and dominated. In other words, it's a training place for the victims of white supremacy. And 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 those of us, the, the victims, we become convinced that we deserve to be controlled by them. Why? Because they think better, they know more. And it trains at the same time, the same system trains their children to be dominant trains their children to assume that they are to be dominant in this world that they have created. And so it trains the mind of the oppressed. It says that we, being the, the enemy, the oppressor, we're smart. And so there is fear of what it would mean to not 
learn from them and to not do well in their schools. And so we surrender, we submit, and we become convinced of their superiority. That's what that system does for African people. I want to talk also about turn and face their oppressors. Okay. Real quick. All she talked about was the science of tribalism. They're girls, so they call it racism because women are globalists. They think everybody should be the same. But she's talking tribalism and how people teach tribalism. That's no different than Malcolm X saying 50 years ago, shit, 70 years ago. Why do you let your quote unquote enemies teach your children? If I'm teaching your kid, your kid gonna be what I am. If your kid think he ain't what I am, then he going to be a lesser man than me. I'm going to make sure they subservient because I'm tribalist, B. But I'm telling you guys from real life personal experience. That black women want your kids to be slaves. They just want to be the slave owner. They want the same deal the white women want. You know what they say? Women, white women didn't have a problem with, with slavery. They was just mad about their cut. That's all black women trying to do is increase their cut. They don't give a fuck about you. They want you to be a slave. I'm in those rooms, B. My name ain't on the on the docket, but I was in those rooms all the way from 2011 to 2014 when they closed down 49 Chicago schools and they tried to replace all those schools with charter schools. And the black teacher said no. I was in those rooms and they asked me to help them with a the curriculum. And I said, well, give me the boys because you need a different curriculum for boys. And they told me, nah, you just give me your curriculum. We're going to take the credit. You got me fucked up, bitch. These whores are horrible. They want your kids enslaved. They want to be part of the system because the system works for them. Destroying you works for them. They get rewarded for destroying you. They not your friends, B. But here's the thing. From this point on, I want you to keep this in mind. For the next two speakers that you hear, and I'm not going to play all the Chris Wesley, but I'm going to play the next chick and I'm going to play, play Chris. Everything that they say white supremacy is doing is what they're doing to you. I keep telling y'all, 90% of the shit y'all call racism is really toddling. Hey, for real zone, that's what you're on. For the record zone, Steve Harvey did not take me out those rooms. The nigga took me off the shelves. So I'm going to get his ass for that. Black women took me out those rooms. But Steve Harvey, black woman, same shit. Anyway. <sighs> Let's listen to white supremacy. And how it's your fault. And how, how they know everything that the quote unquote white man is going to do to you. And then they did it. Right? Black women know everything they're trying to do. And then black women help them do it. Think about. I just need y'all to understand that. As long as y'all understand that, y'all will be alright. Don't be like, oh my God, the white man did this to us. No, the white man didn't do this shit to you. Black women did this shit to you. You ain't seen the white man in your, your community. They don't even own your local stores. Them Arabs. The only white people you see is white women in the schools and white men on the police force. And ain't none of them got nothing to do with policy. They enforce policy. These bitches is your policy. These whores are horrible. But let's continue. It's an extreme level of self-destruction. Let me read this again. Black women can teach their daughters how they possibly assist in the destruction of black men and black people by allowing black men to hide out in the vagina, to allow this hide, hiding out when they know, they know that they should turn and face their oppressors is an extreme level of self-destruction. What is she saying? Yeah, what is she saying? Tell me how the black man hides in the vagina, hides behind the skirt. Tell me how y'all know these men are hiding behind your skirts. You want them to leave, but they, they in your back. 
And that's where you want them to be at the same time. Because can't no man tell you shit. You want them behind you, and then you behind you, and you say, why you behind me? You're supposed to be a leader. Go ahead and tell me, ma'am. Go on, go on, tell me. I'm ready. It is not acceptable for you to be a man, be with a man who is not in one way or another doing something to destroy the system of racism, white supremacy. Say when an intelligent black man walks into a room, the whole room stops, but we don't see enough of those men. First of all, that's not there's not a lot of any great men. That's why we have great man history. Well, who do they destroy? Who do they call a coon? Who do they call a sellout? Who who do they call themselves a sapiosexual and spend their whole time trying to outsmart this market? Who does that? Not white supremacy. Who does that? Alright, let's let's I'm telling you, everything they blame on white supremacy is what they do to you on a daily fucking basis. No. Brothers, who you are naturally, your God-given right, the beauty and the essence of who you are, you destroy this world. That's why I hate you so much. Because you can be in a gutter, in the streets, writing raps on, on toilet tissue. You can be in a pen. Wait. You can be in the gutter? I'm going to bring it back, though, because I think it's funny. You can be in the gutter. You can be on the streets. And what you're doing in the gutter on the streets, you're not trying to get yourself together. You're trying to write raps on toilet paper. Or you could be in the pen also writing raps on toilet paper. Because this is this is the, the you got to be the menstrual class, bro. I'm telling you, they can't think of you as an engineer, as a political leader, as a banker, as a person that can lead the school. You see how they're trying to take down... What's his name? King Randall. Because all he want to do is teach kids how to read. He taking the kids on nobody else want. And be like, let me teach you a skill. And they're trying to bring him down. Look, let me tell you something, bro. Girls with clothes on need to be stopped. They must be stopped. Once they put on that goddamn bra and spin it back around so they put on their titties. From that moment, my nigga. You should put like a scarlet letter, but it's a stop sign on their fucking forehead. They must be stopped. Stop from talking, stop from doing, stop from being. All these bitches, as soon as they put on an article of clothing, bro, they should go directly on probation, bro. I swear to God. But let's talk about how we should all be rappers. Right. Streets, writing raps on, on toilet tissue. You could be in a pen having nothing, and they still hate you because they see the God in you. Matter of fact, when they look at you, they see God. Wait, 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 wait. I've been a man my whole life, right? I've been male my whole life. I've been, I've been studying other men my whole life, you know. Ironically enough, even though my dad, I grew up with my dad, ironically enough, I watched my dad. I studied my dad from a distance. He wasn't really my mentor, ironically enough. But his brother, my Uncle Jerry... His dad, my grandfather, my mo my mother's grandfather, my mother's father, my other gr my maternal grandfather. Me and my sister don't get along, but she picked the best boyfriends. All my brother-in-laws. I have been studying under men my entire life, and you know who I never really saw as God. Homeless niggas, criminals, violent people like emotional niggas that that can't. Take their emotions and just fight. Motherfucking niggas that write raps on toilet paper. I've never seen them niggas like, yo, I see the God in this nigga B. Never, it's never happened. Maybe the guys that she's talking about, maybe people just don't like them because these motherfuckers is the derelicts. Did you ever think of that? How did you go from when you got your stuff together, you smart? You, you're, you're securing yourself when you walk in a room and you have presence, which is anybody with presence, that the, the room shut down 
How we go from that to writing raps in the alley on toilet paper? How the fuck this? Girls wearing clothes need to be stopped. We ain't even got to crush yet. I'm still trying to get through her intro check, but uh, let's go. I don't know why I quote myself here, frankly. <laughs> a man that lacks the ability to see the fullness, the greatest potential, potential and power in himself will never be able to see the fullness, cultivate the potential, or appreciate the power of his queen. Let's go back. Because she missed the most important part of that. The most important that part of that is that a quote from Zaza Ali. For those who've been on social media, y'all know who Zaza Ali is. She a Juice and Berry Hotep chick. Don't listen to these Hotep chicks. All they want to do is find a nigga to run in the forest with no shirt on so she could be a sister wife. Potential or appreciate the power of his queen. We really do. If he does not respect himself, if he does not see the divinity within himself, he is going to destroy you. Pause. Pause. Have you seen our baby daddies? Have you seen these bitches' baby daddies? I left the. You see it out here. If he does not see the divinity within himself, he's going to destroy you. Have you seen these niggas, baby dad? But if you have standards, then your mama black. So if you see the divinity in yourself, if you want something better for yourself, then they going from you must be gay to your mama black, so you should respect this anyway, to now they're saying you better go find a white girl. Y'all saw that. It's not the first time I heard it, but y'all heard that, that interaction when I was... Uh, Talking to what fuck shorty name was on the world class channel. What's she saying, nigga? You better get some white slaves. You want my fuckers to actually follow instructions. So if you see the divinity in you, she's telling you get a white girl. Well, I'm telling you get a white girl. I'm I'm the the parenthesis. If you see the divinity in yourself, if you see the tribalism in yourself, if you can love your brother as you love yourself, if you can cooperate with other men, if you can be, you can see yourself being something greater. And if you can't see yourself being something greater, believe in a brother that sees something great in you and you just follow the coach. You better get a white girl. <sighs> Tell said they don't do shit. They got Yoni rocks, bro. They put rocks in. All right. Anyway, let's, let's. Guarantee it. Been there, done that. Of course she's been there and done that. She look pregnant now. That's a maternity shirt. Of course she's been there and done that. But I, I, I... We think we can change some of these brothers or we focus on that 30% of real good and ignore that 70% of run like hell. <laughs> I'm telling you, if he can't see the greatness in himself, he'll never be able to see it in you. Next slide, please. <laughs> and I said to Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. This is the star of the show. And they still don't call her a doctor. So that medical degree don't mean shit. They still don't call her a doctor, but they do call her an icon. All right. Let's go for it. I just want to say this real quick. I haven't listened to this whole thing. But I want to tell you something. Not only is she somebody black mama, and my mama black, so I understand. But she also from Chicago. And as I tell you guys all the time, Chicago, the Midwest, in general, Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, Cleveland, worst women on the planet. Horrible. The Midwest is the toilet bowl of America. The worst toddlers in the world. So the fact that she's from Chicago, she can't even change her last name she found a nigga to cuff her can't even take that man name the worst most masculine toddlers on the planet they get old and they go from a pantsuit to wearing a dress don't be fooled by the dress these bitches are still vaginal men worst toddlers on the planet but all right let's let's get to the main event oh, man you are too going to have sexual intercourse i got the gun 
I frighten him. <laughs> Gentlemen, what will happen? <laughs> Did she just try to make a correlation with how women feel in white supremacy? Because white supremacy is the man. You're not a man. And she about to tell you why you're not a man in a minute. But just said if, if a girl tried to rape you by gunpoint, that your penis will go down. Y'all don't remember the article of those two dyke bitches about four or five years ago who raped this dude at gunpoint in the back of an Uber. He ain't go down. Made him take fellatio. So Greg, I'm gonna address what yo yo comment in a minute, but you're right. So that's just basic fundamental physiology. So they don't have to worry initially about the female. Who they have to worry about is the male. But if they attack the male, then they harm the female. Pause. How does that work? Her initial statement was, they don't have to worry about the female, so they attack the male. And then somehow say, but if they attack the male, they hurt the female. But they steady attacking the male, and black girl magic is brighter than ever, my nigga. So, once again, she wearing clothes, and she got on like three layers of clothes. So, you know she don't know what the fuck she's talking about. But, she sold a book, so, yeah. If they attack the male, they attack the male by killing or unemployment. You see, if a man is unemployed, he cannot function as husband and father. Pause. I want to give a shout out to, to the big mic drop. When I was on Big Mike's show, I said something to the effect of, you know you're not going to get hired if a black woman is a human resource. And this man pulled out a whole skit called Coonerton. And he was, and it said it like, yo, a black woman will not hire a heterosexual black male because he looked like her baby daddy cousin. This is true in all elements. So if her whole point is that white supremacy job is to kill you economically so you can't be a husband and a father and feel like a man. Nobody stops your money like a black bitch. Nobody. I'm about to block zone so my granny could get it. Anyway. Nobody stops. You. So once again, everything they're blaming on white supremacy is what they do to you on a daily basis. This is the legend of Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. I just want to point that out. So what she's saying, if she believed it, it's what women do. It's not what men do. I've been hired by racists, by gay white guys you know who ain't hired me, sons of single mothers and single mothers. And they understand this. Do you see? So this is what the war is all about. They used to. In other words, if we look at our past history, there was a long historical period where black men would be lynched and castrated if someone said he looked at a white woman. He thought about thinking about looking at a white woman. <laughs> He looked at a picture of a white woman. Pause. I want to say something about that real quick. Like and sub as y'all come in, man. Pay your babysitting fees, man. Pay your daycare fees if, if, if you like in the sermon. I want to say this. The fact that the Klan are such simps, they really just pussy protectors they sent they simp enforcers is why black women are so horrible let me explain let me explain
if you have a monopoly on anything, then you can serve them anything and they have to accept it because where else are they going to go? Right? Monopoly rules were put in place because I'll give you an example. AT&T. When AT&T had a monopoly over the, the fiber wires that they use for the network they they dictated how much a long distance phone call costs how much a local phone call costs uh your your internet speed all that it wasn't until AT&T got deregulated then got deregulated again because Google had to get deregulated that's how you get all these websites and different apps and things of that nature or was it IBM it was either IBM or Google like even even the service providers had to be deregulated deregulation leads to innovation the more opportunity a person has to take the the current module and improve upon it the better your product will be competition brings down prices and uplifts quality so when black women had a monopoly on black men and because black women inherently are victims. So they want their kids and their everybody else to be a victim. They would destroy their sons and their husbands. Because they wouldn't they wouldn't take a strong man. A strong man couldn't be their husband. Right? As much credit as y'all give Coretta Scott and um and, and Betty Shabazz. Notice as soon as their husbands died, all them chicks was doing feminist rallies. Black women had a monopoly on black men. <laughs> so they could treat you like shit. They could not cook, not clean, argue about the most arbitrary things, fuck up your peace of mind, tell you that the most ingenious thing you ever did in your life is dumb, not support your dreams because where else you going to go? <laughs> the, the inability to date interracially that was enforced socially by, you know, whoever. Klansmen, laws, marriage laws, whatever. Is the reason these whores are horrible. Now, the, the the crazy part is how deregulation made you better, right? It made you better, even to the point that even though I think the passport bro thing is kind of cowardly, I understand it. I understand it. And I'm not against passports. I just wish they understood how to vet women before they go. I don't care where you go, just learn how to vet them before you get there. Or you're going to go through the same problems. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you go, there you are. You can't run from your problems because $40 stretch longer. But whether it's the passport bros, whether it's guys that's talking about they only date white women or they want an Asian woman or whatever the case may be, it's because the women who have direct contact with you from birth through puberty and probably through college are a bad product and they never became a better product. They became a worse product. These bitches is fatter in, in 2022 than they were in 2002. They were sexy in 2002. Now these bitches is huge. I go to the store, see 15 year old girls, taller than me, wider than me, bigger than me. I'm like, shit, bitch. You're bigger than the, the, the offensive line was when I played football in college. And you're 15, bitch. They're becoming an even worse product. And they still think they have a monopoly. Worse attitude, worse body, worse, least likely to be able to pair bond and mate. <laughs> Horrible partners. I want y'all to notice that too. When you look at other ethnic groups of women, they learn teamwork and partnership at a very early age. Volleyball. Competitive, uh, competitive cheerleading. Not, 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 not pom pom shit that these girls, be, the black girls do. Black girls be part of a cheer team. That's individual dancers that do a routine. I'm talking about cheerleading. When you have to trust this girl next to you to make sure that you don't fall off the top of the pyramid. Synchronized swimming. Have you ever seen a black girl do synchronized swimming? First of all, 
girls used to get on ROTC in high school so they didn't have to swim and jump. But you know how strong you have to be to swim in the first place? In the first place, swimming takes every muscle. So first of all, how, how strong and fit and when you need, and then you have to learn a routine that you do underwater, and and you're you're doing a doggy paddle upside down while your legs in the air like teamwork. Why does the WNBA suck? They don't understand teamwork. Just a bunch of bitches shooting air balls, hoping somebody else get the. It ain't a rebound because it's an air ball and put it back up. They don't run no set plays, no shit. Black girls don't do shit right. And they don't even want to do shit right. Because they untrained toddlers. But men are awesome. To the point that they can only get the bottom 4% of men. 10% of men. That's where they at right now. That's why they all be like, men ain't shit. And you be like, yeah, men ain't shit. Men are awesome. They got to only deal with the, the worst men. Because niggas that learn how to read or get a job. Be like, yo, I, I deserve better than this shit. I deserve better than a girl that steal my money. Better than a girl that fuck my cousin while I'm at work. Better than a girl who won't change her last name to mine. Better than a girl who come to a relationship with with, with babies and, a, and a, a cemetery clit. You know what I'm saying? This got three kids, two abortions. I'm like, I deserve better than that. I deserve to have my own, my own legacy, my own lineage. I deserve a motherfucker I could trust in my house. I deserve somebody to make me lunch when I got to go to work. I deserve that shit. And they're not adjusting. They're not adapting because they're not trained. And they're being trained by other black women like Chris Wilson. So everything they say is white supremacy is really black tolerant. Or well, single mama tolerant because white girls do it too. I agree with that. White girls do it too. But black men, white men kill their wives. I would kill my wife. I don't give a fuck. I would do it because I'm American. American men kill their wives. If this bitch is so out of pocket, they kill that bitch. And they plan on it. It's not an emotional thing. It's a, what you doing, Tom? And I'm building a mausoleum to my grandfather in the backyard. Next thing you know, he making a police report like, oh my God, my wife's been missing for two weeks. And this bitch buried in the backyard. He done put a whole statue over this bitch. Bro. You gotta give a bitch penalty, man. You can't just. Anyway, let's let's listen to this white. I mean, this a uh, black girl. I mean, uh, this black empowerment. <sighs> the white man. So that means any other male has four choices: boy, girl, woman, baby. Some black men died saying, don't call me no boy. So that, that's three choices. Girl, woman, baby. Until recently, girl and woman were out. We can go into that later. <laughs> but baby, how many black women have called a black man baby in their day? Tell the truth, shame it down. <laughs> How many black gentlemen call the woman they sleep with mom? Hey mom, can I ride with you? <laughs> How many black men have called the place where they sleep a crib? <laughs> so the brain computer just prints out. Man calls another man the man. That's the isolating article, not a man, the man calls himself a baby, calls the woman he sleeps with mom, calls the place where he sleeps in crib, will call himself a motherfucker. So they made an entire movie about that. I mean, y'all saw Baby Boy. They made an entire movie based on this goofy ass speech. She is so think about it, you got an all male cast on a hood movie based on what a black woman from Chicago says how she feels about men and what she taught her sons and grandsons and how to feel about men.
And even if I gave, uh, I don't even know who said that. I want to get, I want to get a proper credit to what credit is due. Let me scroll up real quick. Slick Rick. Even if I give Slick Rick the benefit of saying that these were the silent generation people. These were just the vocal ones, bro. Because my both of my grandparents are silent generation. And they would bust that thing, bro. It was like, fuck these crackers. I bought this land. I'm going to protect my land. When black men have a victory, they give credit to blacks. When black women have a victory, they mention the one. When black men have a micro victory, a stepping stone victory, they erase it from history. That's why they erase Generation X. You never hear nothing about Gen X. When you have a micro victory that's a stepping stone to something great, they don't even talk about that. The reason that uh, Andrew John, Andrew Jackson illegally went to Negro Town, killed all the black people. It was called Negro Town. Come on, let's. It actually was called Negro Town. Killed all the black people. Then rewrote history that all the old black people, the women and the children that he didn't kill, somehow went from black slaves that they was chasing, black. Black dudes that ran to Florida, because Florida was a French colony at the time. It wasn't part of the United States. It was a French territory. <laughs> Somehow he went down there and killed all the niggers. And whoever got a chance to still be alive, they ended up being on the Trail of Tears and they became Native Americans. Think about that. So how was they black when you got there, but Indians when you left? And it went from Negroville to ja- Negro Town to Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida was Negro town. And the reason he did that is because Haiti won a revolution and he didn't want the world to get back to the the free colors that they could get a win. So before the news can come back that Haiti beat France, they invaded a French territory to take those niggas out I say all that to say this which was illegal which was totally illegal you know what I'm saying John Marshall who was the US Supreme Court Justice at that time the Chief Justice told him he couldn't do it and Andrew Jackson went against the grain he was like nigga John Marshall made this decision let's see if he can enforce it we the ones with the guns so y'all can tell me money is power all the time but I'm gonna tell y'all what Andrew Jackson said Might mix right. Feed the pack. Feed the shooters. Feed the logo. The logo will feed the shooters. I got you. Anyway. (sighs) Sup, Mr. Oh, we was great influence. You got money, right? We reduced the price of pussy to forty dollars. This shit was two hundred dollars when you was a shorty, nigga. We was great influences. Freak Nick it up, nigga. It ain't my fault you missed it. Anyway, let's get back to this strong, independent, married Nubian queen telling us about white supremacy black chicks. So what does that term mean? Well, it means that you are powerless. See, people don't, we don't like to face the reality of our powerlessness in this system of racism and white supremacy. Like a lot of people, I've been on several radio shows and talking about racism and white supremacy, and some black people have called it, why does she say supremacy? Supremacy just means whoever is in charge. You see, and we may not want to face that reality, but the only way you can solve a problem is to face the problem. Okay. I think that's a good place to take a quick break. She said the only way you can solve a problem is to face the crime or face the problem. Depending on how you see it. I think she said face the problem. But the type say face the crime. 
But I'm going to let it be what it is. Like and sub as y'all come in, man. Pay your dick gift fees. <sighs> She's right. But the problem is the toddler. Train your toddler. I need to take a quick break from listening to three women in a row that was wearing clothes. So. All right, guys. So, sending y'all one minute clips of whatever is impactful in any of these shows, man. I hope y'all enjoying the the Baby Boomer series because I'm here all week. I'm roasting these old niggas all week. And I also, right before we start the show today, I'm going to replace the wheel because this wheel don't work. I got a Dollar General wheel right here. This raggedy ass wheel. So, we're going to switch this wheel and starting tomorrow in the chat. We're going to play tic-tac-toe. I'm going to figure out how to install it. And I ain't had time today. But we're switching the wheel out. No more Wheel of Fortune. We're going to tic-tac-toe. Anyway. <sighs> I'm laughing at Arsenal talking about absolute nonsense. Um... I closed it out. I suck. Well, let me see if I can reopen it. I want to. Hold on. This thing broke. All right. So, I just want to break something down to you guys real quick. Every man should be able to beat a girl. Just on general principle guys should be able to beat a girl you can outsmart a girl you can outthink a girl you can out finesse a girl but you can't if you're in your feelings because these bitches will finesse you with the coochie she she goes off your desire but just off finesse you can out finesse a girl you can't out desire a girl because girls want everything instantaneously play both sides they'll create a third side trying to figure out if I should end the show on the Soleil video. I might. I might end the show on the Soleil video. But y'all youngest who never saw Soleil. And honestly as I reviewed it earlier, yo she had flow. Like it sounded like Jay-Z was writing the lyrics like you could tell it was the, the late 90s, early 2000s. But she got she got flow. So so if y'all hold on to the end man, I'm gonna end it with the Soleil video. Um, I, I just wanna I just wanna say this real quick. Oh, by the way, shout out to XL Pro for the $5 cash app. Supporting the dead kids always, man. Shout out to XL. Shout out. <sighs> shout out to Zone for the $2 cash app for daycare fees. But you don't get no applause because you've been acting a fool in the chat. So you get a you get a title. Mom, what that? Oh, um, I want y'all to understand that everything that they blame on white supremacy, they did. I tell you all the time, single moms only raise killers. I was wrong. I thought about this earlier. I always say they only raise killers, cowards, and gays, but that's not true. Single moms do not raise killers. They raise shooters because shooters are cowards. They don't have no hands, so they just shoot because they can't lose a fight. Killers are something different. A person who kills a psychopath, something totally different. These boys just shoot. They shoot at you, miss you. Hit a four-year-old kid. <laughs> so I'm saying I wrote a lyrics. <laughs> Put your own time out, nigga. Um, but single moms only raise shooters, cowards, and, 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 and gays. Everything they're talking about is on, the only things they can talk about because that's all they know how to do. <laughs> and then they recruit these guys. <laughs> Who think they're protecting a crayon. And they end up protecting. Killers. Cowards and gays. I need to get out the habit. Shooters, cowards and gays. That, that, is, that is what they support. That is. That is who they intrinsically are. 
Nobody's a bigger killer than Keisha. I mean, just the abortion numbers. Even before we get to the fight promoter numbers. They just never get penalized for being murderers. They kill infants. They kill t- they kill fetus. They kill grown men by by getting some simping force to pull the trigger. They kill they get their brothers killed. They lovers killed. Fucking good Samaritans killed. These generational curses are just walking death, bro. It's just walking death. Pussy is delicious. Don't get it twisted. But still. Yeah. Shout shout out to um oh, I don't even know what you name this nigga using today. But shout out to Doug for the ten dollar cash app. Um So I asked the question a long time ago. Don't they have a John Marshall Law School? Yes, best law school in the nation. John Marshall Law School. Named after the first Supreme Court Justice John, John Marshall. <laughs> the guy said he killed on accident, too. Uh, Hologram said, what's up with Mr. Palmer? I, I think he in YouTube jail. They either suspended or he got a flag on his account. Somebody flagged his account. So he in YouTube jail. Um... So, yeah, man, just remember, every time you hear something about white supremacy, anything you hear about white supremacy, know that's a black woman. Y'all already call them the right hands of white supremacy, but I'm telling you, they're not the white hands of white supremacy. They are white supremacy. They are white supremacy. And I'll tell you why. Because everybody, as a man, as a man, men will just avoid you. We don't fuck with you. We'll just avoid you. Women, regardless of color, women are white supremacy. But they're not. They're just supreme toddler, right? Because 90% of the stuff you blame on white supremacy is really tolerant. Never forget that. So even when y'all start talking about the Karens, even though I think this nigga uh, Terrell Owens is some real cupcake-ass shit, he a simp-ass nigga. But still, when he talking about the Karens, what? Oh, I'm getting karen That's just tolerant. It don't matter what color the toddler is. Toddler's going to toddle wherever toddlers are sold. So everything that y'all blame on, quote unquote, it's just always women. It's always Rosewood, fucking uh, Black Wall Street. You know, anytime some bullshit happen, you can trace it back to a goofy bitch and nothing happened to her. Nothing. The Civil Rights Movement, the Civil Rights Movement started because that Chicago boy went to Mississippi. Um, Oh, shit. Man, I, I forgot his name. Um, Emmett Till. Emmett Till started with a white woman. Being a professional fight promoter. These toddlers are always tolerant. That's why you got to tribe up. You got to tribe up and create your system. Create your logo. Let people know what you're about. So when toddling happens, people be like, nah. Them, nah. I don't, you notice how, how the the mafia never went down over a toddler? You ever noticed that? The Not the Jewish mafia or the Italian mafia. They ain't go down over a toddler. They went down over guys in the organization snitching. But they didn't go down over a toddler. Toddlers is like, yo, I ain't. You feel what I'm saying? So... You got to figure out a way by tribing up and getting some of this ism. I heard down somebody else show. That's all they kept saying was ism. But by getting some of this ism, get, get some of this structure, this policy, you know what I'm saying, this organization, getting the motherfuckers to back you in such a way so y'all can, y'all can be free. Emmett Till was not one of the first cases. Emmett Till was one of a long history of cases. Pocahontas was the first American case, if you ask me, of a toddler's tolerant. Uh, Elizabeth Scott Key was another case. She's the one that wanted to fuck a white guy so bad that she was like, you can you can enslave all these men niggers, but let the white 
let the uh, black women who swirl with white guys be free citizens. Like it's a it's a long history of toddlers fucking up your life, bro. A long history. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna sit it down on that, man. That is today's Boomer Black History moment. Stay to the end. I'm gonna play the Soleil video. As always, love each other as you love yourself. Feed the pack. Toddler tales are crazy stories that can only happen to me. Each tale is endorsed by Toddlerology and the Marry Your Secretary courses. In a world where toddlers are only loyal to her employer, learn the skills needed to train your toddler to work at your relationship like she works at her job. There's courses for every level of your relationship status, including polygamy. Need support? Join scheduled study groups with other Tylerology members. Click the link below. And now, back to today's story. These bitches are fight promoters. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Welcome to the daycare. Train your toddler. Please train your toddler. Weapons, timeouts, take her allowance. Cause I'm supposed she will destroy your life if you allow it. Fuck it, I'm tired of rapping. Yo, low, bring in the choir. Welcome to. The day care. Welcome to the day care. The day care. Welcome to the day care. Why did Daddy say so? Um, because we were talking about every night. Um, um, we. Um, I wanted some out. Okay. Cause Daddy told you you can't have a boyfriend in his house, so you're moving out. Yes.
better with nine. If I leave, dear John, will be the letter you find. If you want it, you can have it. It ain't better than mine. It be another man's gain. It ain't better than mine. Now tell me. Your girlfriend's lying, baby. It wasn't me. Your girl said I hate it, baby. It wasn't me. Your girl wants to give it to me. She wants to give it to me. She wants to stop it till my letter come and kill me. Your girlfriend's lying, baby. And I know better than to run with everything that I hear Trust was never problem for us, it was perfectly clear It's been like happy ever after for the past two years I know she wants you though, she said it on the night that we met Now she take it drastic Yo, is that toilet water in the bathtub? She's measure trying to see if she get She fighting in the battle that she This is definitely toilet water in the bathtub no, she never can win. Step it down to a six. Hey, yo, let me quit playing. Hey, guys, I just wanted y'all to see the type of dudes. The type of, the type of chicks that the dudes who you think are pro-blackity, blackity do. And all these chicks become something different, bro. They all become something different. As soon as... What happened, chat? Uh, pitch at. Hold on. As soon as as soon as they they career is over and they realize it's 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 a rap, they can't get nobody else. They all become this, bro. They all join the religion and become this shit right here, bro. Shout out to Professor Griff for dealing with genuine ex wife slash baby mama who take baths in toilet water. And on that note, y'all. We out, man. We out. When you working with 10, wanna walk in my heels, wanna walk with my deals, wanna know how it feel. I'm just being for real. I take your word for it this time. I'm staying with you. Make sure it never happened. I ain't playing with you. Now tell me. All my friends are comics, so they don't want to really talk to you about it. I mean, I got one good friend that we talk a lot about relationships, and 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 really, it's. It, I mean, you classify, you say pimping, but you know, pimping people think pimping is you know you beat your girl and she goes sell pussy for money, but it's it's a mentality of.